Hello, everyone. How's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to medieval dynasty, shall we? Sam Bohr wants some clay. So for Sammy, what we got to do is go around back if we can. Um, you don't want to steal from this man. Here we go. Use the old square to jump. And we need to hit up his clay area. And here it is. So he's got this clay deposit. And he also has this strange deer figurine, which you can take. And it's not stealing. And there's another one. And there's several of them. And they sell. Just take these. Don't even ask any questions about these. Just pick them up. And be glad that they are here. Uh, look around for as, as many as you can get. And just scour this area. Okay, good. And then now it's time to go ahead and, you know, use our shovel. And we need to dig up clay deposits. So just hold down right trigger with the... Uh, or that doesn't work. You have to push it individually, unfortunately. And then we get clay. And the clay is weighing us down, but not by a lot. It's no big deal. Yeah, you can hold it down. There you go. All right, fantastic. That feels better. And now we've updated the quest. And you can deliver this to Sam Bohr. And remember, usually you can do this at any time. It doesn't matter if this man is sleeping. It doesn't matter how scary this guy is. You see, he's sleeping in his bed. And you can just talk to him. Here's all the clay you wanted. Will you finish the story now? And you hold the torch right in his face. And you say, and he says, all right, all right. So as I've already said, Jordan wasn't much of a fighter back then. He didn't have any money nor connections, but he had one thing, an unusual ability. You see, from an early age, Jordan was exceptionally a good liar no sweaty palms no voice cracks no tells really calm steady breaths eye contact held all the way he eventually managed to handle any kind of pressure even in the craziest of situations but it wasn't that at first he felt no pressure lying no stress at all it was as natural for him as breathing he had absolutely no remorse listen he came up with a plan, a plan so immensely moronic and unrealistic that it's really hard to believe that it works so perfectly. At first, he convinced the nearby town's tailor to sew him a whole set of clothes worthy of the most wealthy nobleman. The finest fabric, silken threads, you name it, horrendously expensive. Expensive. So how did he manage So how did he manage to afford it, you may ask? It's simple. He didn't pay for it, so he stole it. I said no such thing. Jordan wasn't a thief, not in the traditional meaning of the word, at least. Apart from that, did I finish the damn story? Ahem. While wearing the new clothes, he traveled to the castle, um, to the king of the realm, and entered it. Oh, okay, okay. Now I know that you're making this all up. It's simply impossible. Aha, you're absolutely right. It is. It's mad to even consider trying to pull that off. But Jordan, he just walked straight in. I don't blame you for doubting me. Damn, I would have been the first to doubt such a thing as that if I didn't see him doing it hundreds of times later with my own eyes. Anyway, he walked right into the castle, and once he was there, he followed through with his plan, which was betting his wife. Whose wife? The king's. The king's wife. Hmm. So, the queen? Indeed. So, let me get this straight. The plan was to get into the castle and lay with the queen? Exactly that. You were right. That's the most absurdly idiotic plan I've ever heard of. I told you, but it worked like a charm. I still don't get it. What worked? What has he accomplished by that? After the lovemaking, he dressed up, deliberately leaving his undergarments on the bedside, and told the queen he'd be right back with some refreshments. Then he went to one of the king's guards and told him that he saw the queen with a company of a strange man sneaking into one of the chambers. The guard rushed in and witnessed that the queen naked in bed with the man's clothes right next to her. As a loyal servant, the guard reported on the matter directly to the king himself, who, as you can probably imagine, became furious, to say the least. He couldn't really punish his wife, that would be bad for his reputation, but he could pursue her lover. Unfortunately for him, at this point, Jordan was long gone from the castle, riding a beautiful bay mare he borrowed from the stable at sunset. 
You see, the king didn't catch the filthy seducer, but it didn't mean he couldn't track him down and find him. To do so, the only track he could follow was the one thing that Jordan left behind, except his undergarments and a pleasurable memory of the queen, his name. Not his real name, of course. The name he used when introducing himself to the queen was the Lord of the Orchards. Precisely. Now you get it. Ha, that's incredible. The Lord's head must have left the company of his body pretty promptly. He didn't get killed. That would have be or in the style. The queen begged for his life to be spared, so the king threw him in the dungeon where he spent all the days he had left. Jordan was amazing. All that with just the power of his wits and his speech. He surely showed the lord that he shouldn't have wronged him. Don't get the wrong idea about his reasons. Jordan didn't get through all that just because of what the lord did to him. You see, the lord was a cruel, merciless brute. He mistreated all his subjects, killed for fun raped for sport. People used to call him laundryman because of his habits of was drowning uh, his bastards in the lake right after birth like unwanted kittens. Jesus. Jordan needed to stop him and he did but that's not the end of the story. After the Lord's capture someone had to take his place. He didn't have any rightful successors but then with just an uncannily perfect timing came a distant cousin of the Lord's a charming young man with two different eyes. You've got to be kidding me. He easily acquired all possessions of his sentenced relative, but Jordan didn't want any of that, not for himself. So he took only three bags of coins from the treasury and left everything else in the hands of the peasants. They were elated. He still probably worshipped there, I could tell you that. Oh, and one more thing. Why three bags, you might ask? That's easy. One for the tailor, another for the stableman he took the horse from, and the last for himself, with the exact amount of coins he was rightfully supposed to earn for his work at the orchard. I told you he wasn't a thief, and he wasn't. He mounted his beautiful mare and left the realm, continuing his adventures. At least, that's the story he used to tell us, so nothing of that may be true at all. But that's just how it was with Jordan. Now I understand why Unighost were talking about. He really does seem surreal. I've never met anyone else like that. Don't get me wrong, he had his flaws, but the things he could do. His tongue wasn't even silver, it was made of pure gold. But wait, you didn't tell me what was the purpose of the Undying Fist. Oh, I thought that would be obvious by now. On that day, Jordan's mission was born. He knew that he was spoiled, uh, that the spoiled, rotten elites like that were scattered all around the world, draining life and dignity from the hard-working, simple folk, and that he was capable of stopping them, to some extent at least. So that's exactly what he started doing: overthrowing corrupted lords and giving them back, uh, and giving back to the community. He sounds like a hero, a true hero. Well, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. So how did you join the pack? Jordan was working solo until he met Unighost. That rat's agile fingers could work where Jordan's tongue didn't, and then they needed someone with other talents they were lacking, like strength, manliness, bravery, independence, gallantry, integrity. <laughs> right, I get the picture. So they recruited the best there was. I was between jobs at the time, so I gave him a chance, and finally the pack started to really make a difference. But I don't like to brag. Oh yes, I noticed. Humble to the bone. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> People at my level don't need to boast about our skills, just like the sun doesn't need to prove it's bright. Anyhow, I already spoke more words to you than I did in the last five years to anybody, so it's time for you to go, and preferably don't come back, ever. It was a great pleasure and a true honor. Yeah, I don't care. Leave now. And in return for giving away my location, deliver this delicious meal to Unaghost. It's his favorite, a knuckle sandwich. Uh, do you want me to hit him in the face? Did I stutter? No, sir. Of course, sir. I'm on my way, sir. All right. So, that's happening. Um, and let's go ahead. You don't want to steal from this man, but we're out of... Let me just check my inventory, see if I can get rid of anything that's weighing a bunch. Let me sort it by weight descending, so I can go to the very top of the list and just see... What's so heavy? Uh, well. This clay is heavy. Um, I'm going to go ahead. It's worth nothing. I'm going to drop it all. And now we're not overburdened. Great. So now it's time to run back. And deliver the knuckle sandwich. Now we're going to go back a different way. I'll show you on the map here. 
we went the top route. We're just going to go straight south across this bridge and then follow this road from the river to the west to Gustovia. This is a long trip. There's no getting around it. Whenever you have to go talk to Sambor and... Oh, my God. Unfortunately, you have to talk to Sambor more than once. Okay. Oh, boy. They're on me. All right. These guys aren't nice. Okay. Now, if they want to keep coming, we can talk to them. Oh, boy. Okay, that guy dodged out of the way. Okay, some of them are still coming. Eventually, they'll get to the end of their tether. Well, bandits, bandits, bandits. All right. Oh, my. Uh, I'm going to need more spears if I'm going to do anything. So let's go ahead and get some. Spears will take logs. Sure. This is going to be kind of funny because what we're going to try to do here is... Oh, boy. Get killed by a tree, apparently. End of the dynasty. So we're going to load um, our game. It happens. This is why you want to save the game all the time. Uh, but luckily, um, the only thing I really did right there was dig up some sand and talk to Sambor. So, not killed by bandits, mind you. They didn't get the best of us. It was a tree. And it was a tree that had already fallen. Like, the idea that a tree that was already kind of, you know, had fallen and was just there like that would, would kill me is a testament to the wonkiness of the um, gravity physics for trees and the damage that they do, which, like I said, when I first played this game, uh, that was not in the game. You couldn't be killed that way, but oh my mercy can you now. So watch out for your trees, people. Alright, now make sure that you just get all of these deer figurines because um, let me see if I can find some more. Dee -dee -dee. Any more lying around here? Here we go. I'm telling you. It makes coming out to Sambor worth it, getting these figurines. You might not think so, but here, let me show you. In... They're worth, like, 30 each. Which, it's not a ton, but it's it's nice. It's just, like, a little bit of cash to uh, use for some things in, you know making a nice new hat for ourselves, perhaps. All right. So let me get out this shovel. Dig up the deposits. Honestly, my plan after this um, is to save the game, make a bunch of spears, and fight those bandits. They might be hiding, like, hiding some good treasure. Also, though, if you don't want to do that, if you're like, ugh, you know, that seems um, difficult or I don't want to bother with that right now, you'll notice that I said I was going to take this new path back along south along the road. Well, if this is too hard, then just come back on this road, go through Barrowaro, and go across the other bridge to Gustovia and just stay safe. Or you can just cut around them through the woods if you want. I'm just skipping through this, of course.
There we go. Bunch of Dynasty Reputation. And now, I'm going to go into my inventory. We're going to get rid of all this clay. And it's time. We're going to get our axe out. And I'm going to cut down a tree in such a fashion that it doesn't kill me. But let's just quick save the game. All right, there it goes. Now it's over there. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to go to handcrafting and we're going to make some spears. And I'm going to make all. I want like 50 of these things. Tremendous. And then I'm going to go here. And let's see. My food is down to 56. So let me just check my food. See what we got. I'll take a drink. I'll eat a couple apples. That's pretty good for now. And we're still uh, carrying too much. So let me go over to this. Uh, and... We're carrying too much by a ton. Let me see. Do I have any? I didn't drop all the clay. So we got rid of a bunch of that. That's great. Um, These pear tree seedlings, they sell for so much and I can't wait to plant them. But all right, there's got to be some spears that I have that are like terrible quality. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Now we're doing much, much better on weight. I don't really want to drop my fishing spear, but I could. I can move okay now. It's dark out, but we know they're out here, the bandits. Oh, there's also just a wolf. So this is uh, a tough situation to be sure. You can hear the wolves like slavering away over there too. All right, you know what? I'm going to hop in here. And just check out his little hunting lodge, I guess. You can't... Apparently you can't sleep in his bed. I was going to see if he was cool with just letting me camp out for a little bit. But he's not. It's the Sambor way. I, I probably don't need six spears then. So let's just... I can drop the fishing spear. Get the broadleaf. Alright. You can hear a wolf killing some animal. Let's see how this goes. Are they out here? Look, there's their... That looks like their encampment. Now we're just going to run. I hit somebody. 
All right, that guy's got two spears coming out of his body. Ian, let's see. Uh-oh. Okay. So we'll just let them go back. Or will we? Here he comes. Aww. Oh, 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 they're coming back. Okay. They're all here. The gang's all here. Oh, boy, I missed. Who are you? Oh, man, look at that, like, diagonal move that he made. What a dodger. That was a good move, dude. Oh, this guy's back. Oh, darn. It is really hard to see. I'm trying to get my spears back. This is going to be a difficult exercise. Look, wolf, do not attack me. Attack them. I really want to just focus on this guy, yes. Darn. I hit that guy. Alright. I'm just going to make spears then. Don't worry. Nothing is happening over here. No one is here. Just another day. Nothing to see here. Alright, sweet. Hey, we unlocked the kitchen. How did we do that, you ask? That guy got hit in the head. Hit that guy in the butt. There you go, buddy. That's my gift to you. Oh, where's my axe? Did it break? Aw, oh, man. I must have broken my axe. I didn't notice that. Alright, so we need stones. Sambor, where are you at, dude? We need some stones. But you notice we can get broadleaf plantain. There's a bunch of plantains here, actually. Look at that. There's our health flying up. I just need a couple stones. Here's one. Fantastic. Now make me an axe. The finest axe in the valley. No problem. This is how you deal with the bandits. Alright, so axe. It is equipped, right? Here it is. Get it out. Work on this tree. I don't believe that they regenerate their health. We're going to find out. Bam. We got a new level in extraction. Just by doing all this stuff. Just by trying to make spears. Make eight spears. This should help us.
I can't wait. All right, we're getting hungry, so I'm going to go ahead and eat my uh, soup. This is plus 50 food, plus 25 water. How about that? Drink that, top off our water. And now, we're good as new. Fresh as a daisy. Uh, let me get to my skills panel. We got two points to spend on, ex on extraction. So, what do we want? Slower durability of... Um... Fifty percent resources recovered from destroying structures is great. I'm going to take that just to help me not lose too many. Yeah, better axes, that's just fantastic. And technology, what did we get here? Oh, we got the kitchen, right. So we can create a kitchen. And we can make all kinds of cool, look at this, we can make stew, better food for ourselves. How about that? All right, let's go to our inventory. Let me go to our tools and let me select uh, these eight wooden spears. I will equip this to number one. We'll put this out and let's go talk to the bandits. Oh, here, oh, that's my fishing spear. We should find a bunch of spears on the road. Eventually, it'll become daytime so we can actually see. Here's a spear. Now we're kind of overburdened, so we don't need to pick up any spears at the moment. I'm going to run up here. Oh, here they come. They were ready for me. They're like, we hear them out there making spears. Uh oh. Oh boy. Nice cutback. Oh. Dead. This guy's hiding behind the tree. He's still up. Headshot. I need that spear. I need that spear. Let me just take it out of his body. These guys are like porcupines. It's so funny. Oh, man. Stop moving like that. It bounced off his shoulder. He's okay. That guy's a champ. Uh-oh. They're back on me. Look, buddy. What did I ever do to you? Oh, nice move at the last second. You felt it. Ooh, he dodged it again. Guy's a genius. I mean, if you want to come back, dude, you're more than welcome. He ran. He's like, oh my god, that's all I wanted. I just wanted to check to see if you could use the spear. I see that you can. He's gone. You know, I actually used all my spears. Would you believe it? Now they're terrible weapons, but... Excuse me, do you, don't mind me. I'm just going to take a spear from your buddy. You could take a spear from yourself if you wanted to be a little bit better in this situation. Wow. Wow. This guy's, the, like, one of the strongest people that you're ever going to meet. All right. Okay. Look at these dudes. They're like, we have, like, 50. Am I hitting him, or am I hitting the spears with when I chop? He's dead. All right, give me these spears. There we go. Oh, I gotta equip him.
There it is. Now, ooh, it's daytime. Oh, hi. Oh, man. Come back, come back. I know you will. I know you will. You're coming back. You can't get enough. Wow. Finally. This guy had one, two, three, four, five, six spears in him. What a champ. I mean, he was a champ. What you got? He's got so much money. Yes, I love this. And onions. The bandits around these areas just have onions to burn. They're just like, we are all about onions. And I'm fine with that. All right. Let's loot the rest of these guys. I don't want Sam Bohr to get in on this just yet. Man, look at this. Ooh, there's food. There's meat. Yes. There's booze. Oh, we're coming out like kings. And we're getting a lot of Dynasty reputation. Because everyone loves when you make the roads a little safer. That's terrific. Uh, your stone axe isn't going to do it. Right, I have too many um, spears. Let me get rid of some. So this one, we'll drop it. How much? Yeah, we're still at a lot of weight. So we'll drop all of those. All right, that's better for our weight. All right, now it's daytime. So let's go check out the actual camp. There might be some more of these turkeys left. There's definitely a wolf over there, which um, I'm going to quick save it. I don't want to get killed by that wolf while I'm... Look at this. They've got two wagons. All right, so they pilfered these carts, and they have contraband. Their contraband is apples. That can't be right. They're like, we got some apples. Oh, boots. Look at this. These are better. They're not good for heat, but they're definitely good. Um, they've got poison, too, which is kind of funny. We're going to be wearing those boots. They're good for the cold. All right, so is that all you guys had? Just a pair of boots? There's no... There's nothing else. These were not good bandits. Is the long and the short of it. But... We're alive. Alright, so I'm going to go into the inventory. And we're going to go to clothing. I'm going to put on these boots. Heck yeah. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to drop like one spear. I'll eat some apples. Just chilling, eating. Alright, now we're good. We should be 100% fine to make it back now. That was a little diversion. And again, you could just run around that. Unfortunately, they didn't really have anything great, but I just like to do it for practice just to see what they've got. We're, we're raising some of our skills. It doesn't really take us too much. We're getting Dynasty rep. If you look at our rep, by the way, check us out. We have 682 rep. So we definitely want to talk to Unighost about that. And keep your eyes peeled on this road because we haven't been on it before. Look at this. What's this? Somebody was like, some woodcutter was just out here. Okay, so they left a stone axe, um, some mead, take it, and abandoned some ooh, fur boots. Okay, so we're going to take it. We're going to take all this mead. It's going to weigh us down a ton, all right? But we can give somebody, like, we can give our hunter the, the fur boots, all right? 
for example. Now I'm going to go over here to inventory. I'm going to get rid of some of these spears now. I'm just, I got way too many. Three is enough. I'm still carrying too much, but it's because of all this treasure that I have, and it's fine. There's like some carpenter or like lumberjack who's like, uh, somebody took my boots and my booze. Rasimir? No, I don't know, man. There were some bandits. I saw. I encountered some bandits on the road before. Um, so it could have been them. I took care of the bandits, though, so you're welcome for that. But I'll keep my eyes peeled for the boots. They look just like the boots that you're wearing. Yeah, I, I, that's an amazing coincidence. You must have bought them at the same um, cobbler. Yeah, the same, the same cobbler. All right, so we're going to go here, cut back in. Oh, my God, Rasmir's getting tired. It's like, I am exhausted. It's okay, buddy. You're doing a good job. All right, we're stinky. So before I go into town, I'm going to take a little drink. I'm going to wash myself off just a bit. Bam. Bam. Everyone, all the ladies and gents in town, they're going to notice how clean I am. my man. I talked with Sam Bohr. He's a real sweetheart, isn't he? The sweetest, like a jar of honey. That's Sam Bohr for you. I see. He did tell me about my uncle, though. The story about the Lord of the Orchards. He has some unexpectedly good storytelling skills, doesn't he? Yes, he really does. I was downright astonished. One time, I swear, he went for over a year without speaking a single, single word, but when we were sitting by the fire, he remembered some anecdote, laughed out loud, and began his tale went from a total mute to a master of ceremonies. The narrative was so gripping it was hard not to listen. He even did voices, but after finishing he became silent again. I never fully understood that side of him. A theater genius trapped in the body of a bear wrestler. He actually asked me to give you something. Really? And what was that? A knuckle sandwich. Yeah, that sounds exactly like Sambor. So you gonna deliver? Um... I can't. I'm afraid I lost it somewhere on the way. Smart lad. But if he asks, I'll tell him you knocked me out cold. Just out of curiosity. What did Sambor tell you about becoming part of the pack? He said that you were looking for some uh, the best to recruit and that he was an obvious choice. Yeah, that seems like something he would say. Um, isn't that the truth? It's not a pleasant memory, but I believe you deserve to know the whole story. We didn't recruit him. Well, I guess we did. Jordan did. But that wasn't a matter of choice. When Jordan and I started to follow his mission together, we were rather successful. Everything was going smoothly, too easy even. We were doing a lot of good, putting many well-deserved smiles on oppressed faces. That's when we let our guard down. There was a secret guild formed by a few of the higher-ranking knights and barons. We called them the Vendors, a bunch of really heartless bastards. Their most lucrative business was selling a living merchandise. And no, I'm not talking about animals. Please don't say it. Slavery was strictly forbidden in that realm. The queen was adamant about that. Well, the vendors had their own set of rules to follow. They caged them like cattle. Mostly women and children forced them to fight rats for the poor little rations they were being given to the damp dungeon they were held in. The guild preferred quantity over quality, so they didn't care about diseases and they didn't tend to wounds. I think I'm going to be sick. Sometimes it took them weeks to get the dead out of the cages. Survival of the fittest, or rather, outlasting of the least fortunate. It was simply horrible. If you ask me... All the damn guild deserved a cruel and slow death, but that wasn't how we operated. Eorden made it very clear from day one. We were never to take a life. That was the most important of rules. 
Anyway, we managed to get everyone out. The carriage is full of broken people. Even the horses kept their heads low, mourning. The despair in the air was even more poisonous than the stench of the rotting flesh, and in all that, we forgot to make ourselves safe as well. We were caught by the mercenaries who brought us to the torture chamber. Yeah, this gruesome place had an even worse room hidden inside. Unbelievable. The vendors weren't in their patient mood, so they sent their worst torturer right away. I was horror-struck, truly petrified, could barely breathe. Jordan didn't say a word, just looked at me. His eyes were relaxed but focused. I realized he wanted me to be calm as well, but I just couldn't. He went first. The torturer strapped Jordan to a chair and just started swinging. His fists were like anvils. Every hit drew blood or broke bones. In a matter of seconds, Jordan's face looked like a bloody pulp. The only thing poking through it was his smile. It was one of the many times I wondered if he was even human. The torturer quickly realized he needed different tools for a, such a unique specimen and went to grab his blades. That's when Jordan started talking. He was making him offers, one after another, but the torturer just kept carving his torso like he was preparing a steak to be grilled. There was so much blood I could taste it in my mouth. I wanted to pass out just to run away from all of that, but I couldn't. My heart was pounding way too fast. That's horrible. Suddenly, the torturer stopped. He looked at me and back at Jordan. This was the only thing he said. If you're lying, you're gonna make, you're gonna watch me do the same to him. I was about to puke, but Jordan just nodded. So he untied us both and helped us escape. There were no, more mercenaries on our way, heavily armed. No one stopped us. Even they were terrified of that guy. We managed to get out in one piece. Well, we managed to get out alive. Jordan's wounds wouldn't heal for weeks, and even after that, he was scarred so badly it looked like he had chainmail stitched to his skin. But we had escaped death, and its emissary became one of us. The torturer. It was Sambor, wasn't it? Yes. I have no words. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Don't be. The path we walked on, it was our choice. We knew the risk. How could you want a person like that amongst your troop? You think I wanted that cutthroat anywhere near me? I couldn't get a wink of sleep with him around for days. I was constantly watching my back, watching his every move. So why didn't you blow him off? That's simple. Jordan made a deal with him, promised him the only thing that mattered to that brute, which was money. A whole lot more than what the guild was paying him, and a cut of every heist that we did. But couldn't you just pay him off or run away? That's not the way Jordan did things. He was a master liar, but when he gave someone his word for real, he never backed down. Besides, as we later found out, Sambor wasn't evil in his nature. He was just a true soldier, did what was asked of him. Jordan spent hours talking with him, explaining our rules of conduct. Sambor never broke any of them, not once. That's incredible. Your lives, I mean. I don't think I'd be able to handle all of that. Honestly? I hope you never have to. I've been through a lot, and after all these years, the thing I wish you the most is to have a boring, steady life. Um, compared to your stories, a boring life sure sounds pleasant. And I have a special request for you that will help you achieve that boredom. Sure thing. What do you need? I need you to go to Borrower, find Ida, and get my scythe back from her. Um, consider it done. Alright. So now, we've completed this next part of the story quest. And let's talk Welcome. to Unighost and... No, we can't talk to him about nice anything right now. Fair enough. Actually, Welcome. can we... Um, no, not yet. Not yet. We can't talk to him. Okay. We've got the quest. All right. So now we need. We have a new quest to do, um, and our buddy is gathering stuff for us. We want to go back to our settlement. Hail, friend. My wares never disappoint. And unload some stuff, but we have um, some things to sell. So I'm going to sell like you know this apple wine and see how much money we can make off Debronica right here. This beer, that's fine. Uh, let's see here. Let me go into the, uh, these, yeah, so all of these deer figurines. See, you get 100 gold, or coins, just for that anyway. And then anything else that I want to sell that I'm carrying that weighs anything. Um, eh, the sticks are heavy, but not bad. What sells? Well, cherry wine, yep, sell that. Uh, we'll keep the cheese for now. The water skin, no, I want that. The boots do so well, but I'm going to keep it. Okay, great. And fantastic. So look at us. We're at 1,600 money. See you soon. And we're doing great. We finished the Sambor quest. We took out some bandits. 
and honestly the season's almost over so we can do even more in this game and expand our settlement further everyone i hope you're still finding this series to be fun and helpful thank you so much for watching take care